Hello everyone, welcome to another Bass Singer Reaction and Analysis. This is The Dragon Ward Comes, this is from Skyrim, and this is voice play featuring Omar Cardona. Now, I just listened, before listening to this, to the original theme, I had not heard it before, I, I, I missed the Skyrim boat, unfortunately, as much as I love my fantasy and my, my games. Um, I missed the boat on it, and I just listened to the original, and I was like, oh my god, this is going to be so effing dope in voice plays version. Um, so I'm very excited to see what they do with it. This is, of course, my first time hearing. It just came out, so striking while the iron's hot, I'm going to try and get this one out as soon as possible for you guys. Um, please like this video, please subscribe to my channel. If you're uh, gaining enjoyment and appreciation of music, watching these videos, please consider donating to my Patreon for as little as $1 a month. And without further ado, let's check out the voice plays version of The Dragonborn Comes. Very, very, very excited to see this. Wow, that's a C sharp one subharmonic. It goes down to a C sharp one there. Okay, now that it's it's funny, you know, they Jeff showed that he could go down to a B zero subharmonic in their Halo theme, and now I feel like the pressure's on <laughs> to have like absurdly low subharmonics in their covers. Now, this is very similar to how they started. Uh, my mother told me. I believe with Jeff coming in on a on a low sub, it's a good way to start. I mean, especially for these kind of you know these fantasy games where the low voices just work super well, where the bass just works. I mean, starting off with an impressive low clean subharmonic is a is a great way to do it. So let's let's just go back and hear that again because why not? <gasps> singing down to a flat one G sharp one in chest um, and he's doing he's doing the kind of more spacious more darkened start to that um, adding a little more power behind it because you know this kind of music a lot of the time you'll have like big kind of male ensemble chamber choir doing like chants and stuff like this if it's like a film score or music for a video game like Skyrim so it does make sense actually to use that technique in this case to be a little bit more uh, dark and powerful and kind of ominous with the voice, depending on the cover. Like when, like Jeff's cover of Shenandoah, I like that he stayed away from that almost entirely because it made more sense that the kind of the flow of the piece and kind of the nature of American folk and uh, that kind of tradition. Whereas this kind of stuff, you're talking about video game music. I mean, a lot of it, it's like it's like powerful singing sound effects, voice acting, shouts, yells, uh, you know, low bass, all this kind of stuff works well to create a kind of intense atmosphere for a game like Skyrim. So that makes sense. As far as background, we have a lot of the kind of dum, 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 like bell tone. And then here in this kind of second iteration of this first verse, we have also some sustained chords as well. So um, a classic move used by voice play to switch if, if not much else is changing, if the chords aren't changing or um, otherwise structurally the song isn't changing, a great way to keep things interesting is to switch from doing something like bell tones, the dim, 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 to sustaining chords. So let's go back and just hear, just kind of focus on what I mentioned about Jeff's voice and how it you know, makes more sense for this style. Um, specifically on those low G sharps and then then the background where they're kind of 
oscillating between these two background structures of how they're filling out the rest of the sound. I tell you, I tell you. Go back a bit more. Oh, our hero who claims a warrior's heart. I take back what I said. In both iterations of this, this text, they are doing both bell tones and sustaining chords. It's not just on the second one. I tell you, I tell you, the dragonborn comes. With the voice wielding power of the ancient Nord Believe, believe the dragon born comes. Neat, neat, neat. Okay, so we have Caesar singing up the octave, which makes sense, uh, as is fitting for the voice types. And we have. Jeff coming back to join him on the lower octave, so it's it's them singing in octaves there at the end, which is a nice effect. And then in the background, we also they started opening up to this kind of whoa whoa thing, which is a progression from the oohs and the dim dims that they were starting on in the beginning. So within this first verse, we've already have one solo, two soloists, different octaves, and then really three different kinds of singing and articulation vocally going on in the background. So already a, already a lot already a lot of change and development happening in this first verse or first two verses without revving up the intensity really or without getting climactic or anything. There's no vocal percussion yet. Um, and the other thing with that verse was, you know, when Jeff was singing the solo in the beginning, there was no low bass line. And now when he dipped out of the solo in this in this verse, there was a bass line. And then he returned back to that solo. So interesting. A lot of, a lot of things kind of shifting around. Kind of shifting around as we move through this piece. It's an end to the evil of all Skyrim's foes. Beware. So this is this first, my first time hearing Omar. Very sounds like a very high light tenor voice. You know, kind of uh, the kind of voice that has a smooth transition between chest voice and head voice, so as to say, the voice can just go up and there's no obvious shift in in registration. It's just really nice. It's the kind of voice like uh, like Mitch from Pentatonix is no, is like notorious for having that kind of voice, and you know, really probably among the best in the world where it's just chest voice, chest voice, chest voice, and then at some point it gets so high where it's like, okay, that's definitely not pure chest voice anymore, but like, where did it shift? Um, so it, it sounds like Omar has that kind of voice from, from uh, just hearing him sing a few bars there. And then Ellie comes in, also a high tenor, and um, Ellie's known more for, I mean, he's got more of a powerful voice than Omar, from what I can tell here. Upon this quick bit of listening, Ellie's, you know, he, he does a lot of the big belts, like the high C belts um, in voice plays covers. So always expecting some big belts from him and some big low notes from Jeff. That's kind of what that's kind of what we get pretty much every cover from them. For the darkness has passed and the legend yet grows. What? There's a sound effect in there that sounds non acapella. It's like a. Let's let's go back and see. I thought I heard it earlier in the song too. No, you know the dragonborns. I don't think I don't think that's a voice. No, you know the dragonborns. Someone I don't know if someone is familiar with how they did the production for this piece, 
Um, that, that one sound does not sound human voice produced. It's possible it is with a bunch of effects and engineering throw on. I mean, the audio engineers for this, for, for voice play and for this kind of music at the high levels are like insane. They can do anything with a sound, sound bite. So it could be a highly processed uh, vocal percussion or, you know, maybe Jeff uh, did something in his low register and they fussed with it. I don't know. But a, a really cool effect in uh, acapella or not very fitting for, again, this style of like video game music. And with that, let's keep powering on through. flat there above tenor high c for ellie this i really i started smiling because i really really like how they're doing this section where it's not a round but it is it's someone taking a melody. some voice part takes the melody say jeff and then the tenors jump in doing the same or similar melody and it just kind of flows in and out almost like a fugue you know almost like a fugue where <clears throat> Like whatever's missing in one melody is being is being fit in with another one and they're crossing and overlapping and it's kind of like this ocean of overlapping <clears throat> melodies. You know, all the same <clears throat> as far as notes and harmonic structure, but displaced in octaves and and and, and some and a few a few changes here and there to where it's not the same thing going in and out, but it is the same kind of harm it's like we're in this like harmonic soup. Of all these different voices interacting. Very, very cool. We're going to listen to the last, <clears throat> excuse me, a few seconds of that. Percussion. I want to see Ellie. I think went a bit higher than high E flat there for a second, and he deserves cred where credit is due. Mm, high E natural. That's a, a a major third above a tenor high C. And it, I mean, it's it's very full and powerful. It it must be in some kind of mix. But but Ellie, like I said earlier, he maintains good. Good power up there. Okay, moving forward. Is that sound effect again? saying earlier about the shouts and grunts and stuff yes exactly <clears throat> perfect in this kind of music and i mean clearly they're all geared up for battle you know war cries are a real thing were a real thing you know battle drums war cries all that stuff and we see it all the time in fantasy of all kinds you know the battles in game of thrones Ta -da! or lord of the rings anything like that um Love it. It adds so much. Now, another thing I like about this section, and I, I try to point this out when it happens, because it's it's not so common in, in modern a cappella, is when the bass line is in a truly normal, if not high, bass range. Like, basically, bass one. And think like bass one in a choir, usually sung by a baritone. And if you just listen to Jeff's part here, we'll just do the last few iterations of this chord progression. Two. I think he only go. We'll see. He, he he goes down. You know, to the point where any choir will have basses that could sing this particular bass line.
Oh, interesting. Interesting. Um, okay, so earlier they were in... Oh, just kidding. They're in the same thing. My brain just destroyed itself for 12 seconds. Okay, so he's going down to the four uh, for the lowest note. One, two, two, down to the four of the... They're in either C sharp... Do, do, do. Oh no, they are they are doing something. Sorry, I'm just all over the place with my note identification today. Okay, so that goes to the one. So they're starting on the five. They're in either F sharp minor or G flat minor, whatever you want to call it. They're in five, three, four, uh, five, three, four, four, one, five, three, four, one. Is that F sharp or G flat two that he's on? Anyway, Jeff is singing a bass line that is very singable for any kind of any kind of bass voice. All basses will have a comfortable a comfortable F sharp or G flat two. And if you don't, then you, I'm sorry, are not a bass. <laughs> okay, now listen for it after that wildly long and unproductive tangent. <laughs> So I don't know, I don't know what language this is. It's common for, oh, also I did just show my new tattoo. Um, comment below if you know what these two different elements are from, the quote and the sword. Um, I just wanted to highlight that because I just like threw it in your face with no explanation. Uh, what was I going to say? My tattoo distracted me. Oh, right, I don't know what language this is. Um, in games or in movies like uh, like the, for instance, Lord of the Rings series, like Elvish, you know, they created that language out of nothing. And so I don't know what language Skyrim uses. I don't know if it's uh, like a, a real language of the, you know, maybe Norse background or influence, or if they made up a language for the show, or if they just made up a language for the song. Don't know. But it's, um, I think it adds a lot to the kind of, storytelling and mystery and world building of a fantasy series to have a language not of the reality we're accustomed to because it does kind of solidify it as like a real thing that's different from what we know so i do really appreciate uh you know like the elvish language from lord of the rings or um i actually just finished you know this is like a a, a child picking up the pieces from my childhood. I just finished the Inheritance Cycle by Christopher Paolini that starts with Aragon, because um, I've gotten more into fantasy reading and I'm kind of hitting all the big ones um, at the start. And really fantastic, really really fantastic. And and he has a number of made up languages, maybe not fully fledged languages, but a number of languages for the different races in his uh, in his world of Alagazia. Um, so that's just a just a point about languages and fantasy series where I, I really think they can add a lot, and it's really cool to hear them sing in this in this fantasy language. <laughs> I think now I think we're in now I think we're in mm -hmm. maybe they were in the dominant for a minute because it sounded like that section they were in the they were in G flat or F sharp but now they're clearly back to C sharp minor so yeah this is a this is a a big <laughs> this is I'm just like I'm like fumbling at the goal line on identifying <laughs> the chords and the keys here but Whatever, we're gonna we're gonna keep it rocking anyway. We're gonna just, we're just gonna keep on smiling. Cool. 
So this this section's cool. A couple things happening with the base, because uh, that's what I tend to pay attention to most for obvious reasons. Um, earlier, again, we had another section where it was a very, very singable for any kind of base. And then we went into this next section where Jeff starts doing this crazy arpeggio. Like super accurate all the way up and down. I would really be interested to hear how accurate and how that sounds live. Um, because like, you, like in studio, you know, you can, ma you can make the tuning of everything really perfect. But also, you know, Jeff's very skilled and I've heard him do this kind of vocal articulation before with these quick jumps very accurately. And um, it's something that you, I mean, like anything, it's, if it's really difficult technically, you just practice it and practice it and practice it until it becomes second nature. So I have no doubt that live, he could also nail this arpeggiation he's doing here, but a very, very cool. So I'm back, up, I'm back up a bit more. And so just notice the bass line here, very, very singable. And then it goes from this very singable bass line to uh, this, this really technically difficult arpeggiation. Um, so just pay attention to the bass here for the next 20 seconds. So, so up to the high E natural again, the third scale degree, and I believe oh, we're in C sharp minor now, although who knows after my track record with this analysis. So he's up to E natural, and it, that sounded like there was some interesting engineering going on and I think it's because Ellie has switched into a mixed voice, but there was some kind of audio engineering to make it sound as full and powerful as if he had remained in chest. There's just a very slight change in the quality of the sound. So just pay attention to that when he goes up high. We'll see. We'll s let me let me get, try to get a, a closer listen. <laughs> There's a there's a a very clear shift in vocal timbre there when he goes to that. Uh, so just listen listen to that. We'll go back ten seconds and listen to all his voice leading up, and then when he goes when he does that motif, listen to that listen to that timbre shift. something happening there with the audio engineering. I don't know what exactly, but it is clearly a slightly manufactured thing that's happening. It's not like he's not singing the notes. They're just, they've just adjusted the, the actual quality and vocal color and uh, yeah, quality, quality of those notes overall. breakdown uh not a breakdown just a little a, like almost like a, a vocal percussion riff from laying there uh, just like a, a fill really a fill is probably the best word for it where the voices kind of dropped out lane jumps in with this fill now this is a tricky I, I was surprised to see how long this piece was because i believe the original unless i watched something that anyway i watched a video that was this it was dragon Warm skyrim theme extended version and it was only three minutes and thirty seconds, and I think it re I think it started repeating itself after about a minute and a half. So to turn that theme into a almost a five minute song here, I mean you can tell there's a lot of repeated material as far as harmony and text and stuff like that, and basically they're just changing the overall structure of the voices to where you know different people are taking the solos, they're doing diff they're choosing different vowels in the backgrounds, they're choosing different kind of supporting harmonies and melodies, not different harmonies, sorry. They're using a, a, a different um, assortment, a different organization, there it is, 
a different organization of the same harmonies, uh, how they're how they're divvying up that work vocally because they're trying to make sure to keep it fresh. And if you have something that's only a minute and a half long originally and you turn it into a five minute piece, you're going to have to do a lot of work to keep it fresh and keep it interesting the whole time. And that's what we're what we're seeing here and what we've been seeing for the last minute or so in this cover. Interesting. I did like so, as I was saying, like I like I was like saying a mention, mentioning a minute ago, to keep it fresh, keep it interesting. They're having to change all this stuff. I think it was smart of them to kind of go back to whence they came, and kind of redo the intro a little bit in their in a in a new structure. So Jeff took the solo again, down to those low, those low G sharp ones, and then maybe Ellie and Omar or just Omar took the second part of that solo. Again, ooze in the background. They kind of this 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 song had a big, you know, start slow, climb the mountain, then come back down for the ending. It's common. It's common. You see that a lot. Like hit the climax, but then have an outro, basically an outro to the song that brings us back to where we started, kind of like recenters us. Um, and they finished. I was expecting a super low sub from Jeff, like to, to truly finish the song exactly how they started it. And then they hit us with that, that bit, that effect that I am still totally not convinced is a, is a voice. <laughs> you know the dragonborns come. It just can't be a voice. That last sound cannot be. Maybe it is. It, no, you know, it could, like I said earlier, it could be with a lot of editing. So it could be Lane hitting like a kick, just like a, and then they like put a bunch of reverb on it and it almost sounded like there was a maximizer on it or something to boost like crazy the high harmonics. So there's like a little crackle in the sound almost. Also, a really nice tasteful riff from over there. It's like, it's like a little, uh, what did he do there exactly? little tasteful riff there um, more of that if the riff had been longer it would have been like very out of place but it was just enough to add a little flair and be tasteful if I need to find out I, where I got that term tasteful riff because if no one has claimed that term yet I will claim it because I've, I, I, I just I need no you know I probably got it from some of the guys in my acapella group when I was an undergrad because I didn't know Jack shite about riffing when I got there. Didn't appreciate it. Didn't know how to do it at all. And it was through that group that I kind of gained appreciation for it. A lot of appreciation for it, for people who can do it. And even learned how to do a bit of it myself, although I'm no riffing master. Anyway, guys, that was Voice Play's recent cover of The Dragon Board Comes from Skyrim. Really cool. And I think they did a good job taking a really short original theme and extending it to, I guess, four minutes and 15 seconds or so, which is a very tricky thing to do. I will say I did want it to get bigger. Um, I wanted it to get, to get bigger. I wanted Lane to be smashing the vocal percussion harder. I wanted to hear more of that yelling, grunting, but, you know, within the context of the piece where they're, like, holding chords on really big, powerful vowels. But... Um, Still a really, really nice cover and um, some really nice low notes from Jeff, some really nice crazy high notes from Ellie, and um, a, nice, a nice view of Omar and a, and a view into his voice, which to me sounds like a very light, a very high light 
tenor voice with good agility that maybe we'll see in other covers. We only saw it just in that little riff at the end. Um, I think my camera ditched about 30 seconds ago. I think I've now discovered that when I hit the 30 minute mark, it'll retract and kind of, yeah, retract and shut off. Um, so you're probably not seeing my movements right now, but I will tie it up with the audio. And um, yeah, guys, hope you enjoyed. Please like, please subscribe, consider donating to my Patreon, and I will see you all for the next one. Bye-bye.